fist the dagger. G'day guys, JB here. We are less than 24 hours away from Game 5 of the 2023 NBA Finals, and while it may be a little delayed, I figure I would get out my review for Game 4 of the 2023 NBA Finals. Of course, I would like to have got this one out in the last 48 hours. However, game day, I was traveling back from a commentary job, and on Sunday, wanted to get in a few holes of golf, clear the head, and uh, relax, look forward to what's going to be an interesting couple of weeks and an interesting month or so for myself. So just a bit of r, &R there, essentially a bit of a break and uh, looking to get back into things. Of course, I did get a chance to watch the game, uh, watch the replay of that, managed to take some notes as normal. And uh, yeah, of course, as we know, Denver now 3-1 up in the series, game five scheduled as I said, in around 16, 15 hours time from the time of recording this, around five o'clock Monday afternoon, 12th of June, Australian Eastern Standard Time. We'll see how that one unfolds, but let's get into it. Let's look back at game four of the 2023 NBA Finals, and we'll look at the first quarter where Miami jumped out to a 21 to 20 lead at quarter time. They never looked really to let Jokic make all the decisions early. And of course, they have really been able to do a far better job controlling both the Nuggets and Jokic when they were pretty much able to leave him one-on-one -on -one and not let him control the pace of the game to get the ball out of his hands, but you know, dictating the play as far as getting the ball out of his hands. Denver missed some really, some very easy shots early on, and that seemed to change the motivation of Miami at home. Of course, we know what it's like to give up easy points, give up easy baskets, and just have a team getting away, doing their own thing in those situations. Uh, but Miami really motivated them to see that those really easy shots and those really easy looks that Denver were uh, pretty much getting weren't dropping, knowing that momentum was going to be on their side. Of course, a big key part of that, though, was getting that ball out of Jokic's hands and leaving it in, the, leaving their fate to someone else. And again, that's just a sign of a really good player, a really smart ball club. You go up against any all-time great team, you go up against any all-time great player, you want everyone but that person uh, who is key to that team or that star player to be making all the decisions, getting the ball out of their hands and forcing someone else to beat you. And that's exactly what Miami was looking to do on the defensive end. Both sides know how to use their size and the mid-range. And again, really evident on this one here. If you've got someone like Denver, who is a vastly bigger team, they like the idea that, you know, they have the ability to shoot, but we know how to get to the cup. We know how to get to the mid-range. If you're going to spread the floor on us, we've got enough size and speed to get by you. If you're going to sag off, we're going to hit a jump shot. The opposite from Miami. Again, they've got a little bit of length on their wings as well. They're not a very big body mass team, but again, a bit of length on their wings. They know how to shoot the ball. Got enough announced about them to get inside as well. They don't particularly want to sit there and just beat you on free throws and threes. And again, particularly for Miami, an ability to get to the mid-range. Turnovers prove the difference in the efficiency battle in this one here. Both sides not shooting overly well, uh, particularly Miami, who was struggling from the field, um, and certainly Denver, who was struggling from the field. But the turnover battle was really the uh, big difference here. Of course, 31.6% from the field for Denver, who were 6-19. Miami, 45%, who were 9-20 from the field. But it was those turnovers that proved crucial and ultimately what kept Denver in the game. Genuine dogfight to start the game overall, as you would expect in a game four, particularly in Miami, while they are trailing. 2-1, Butler leading the way in that first quarter for the Heat. Nine points, two rebounds, two assists, four, five of the field. One or two from deep. Meanwhile, Jokic, six rebounds. Sorry, six points, three rebounds, an assist and a block. Two or five from the field, perfect from the line. Of course, other than the field goal battle, it was also the rebound battle, which was in favor of Miami, 12-5. to five. And steals and blocks in favor of Denver, but there's no shock there, considering the turnovers were not in Miami's, were certainly not in Miami's favor. 
to the second quarter, and Denver really caught fire. They went to the half with a 55-51 break. Both sides completely changed their offensive offensive game and started to open things up and again. That just comes from the propensity of the three ball in the modern game. Stretches the D, second, third side of the offense there. You know, collapse in, open corner shooter, all this sort of thing. Aaron Gordon with a big quarter saw him stretch the floor and attack the rim. It's not the first time that Aaron Gordon has or Aaron Gordon has changed the game in this series, but it's certainly uh, a big reason why he was the player of the game here. His second term was really, really big. Again, finishing with uh, around that 15 point mark there in the first uh, in that quarter alone, really dominating that one there. Again, a big guy who doesn't mind a mismatch is able to attack the cup. A big guy who's been able to steady himself from outside the line just really changes things um, in that perspective. If he feels he's got a good look from deep, he does take it. But again, a lot of times they're going to close out on him, give him a little bit of space. If he can't beat you off the dribble, he's just going to back you down until he's able to get into the paint. Kyle Lowry, though, showing up, trying to generate some momentum back to the heat. One of the best uh, quarters he had or certainly has had in this playoffs, let alone in this series. A veteran, five-time All-Star, All-NBA member, championship point guard, again, Kyle Lowry, really flirting with that you know, second, third tier level entry into the Hall of Fame. Once his career is done, we're talking about a guy who's been around for a while, kept Toronto in contention for a number of years before paying off as a champion, and of course, a key backup at the point guard position here for the Heat. Showing up, trying to generate a bit of momentum, Lowry loves drawing a charge. That's something that this Heat team really enjoys as well. Players who are willing to put their body on the line, trying to generate that defensively because he's not a great defender. And of course, offensively, just you know, trying to get into the paint, get those little 12 footers to drop. Jimmy and Bam remain the only active starters though for the Heat, which has really been a story of the series. Butler and Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo have had a lot of uh, games where they've had big minutes. Um, you know, just been able to push through, just been able to be the key pieces, really struggling as a team when one or both are off the field, oh sorry, off the court. And again, it's the defensive activity and the offensive ability that they both bring that really changes the impact of that team. Really has been the story of the series. Bam having a bad game or being off, not good. Jimmy being off, you know, or not being on the court, not good. Jokic continued to have a bigger impact off the ball than he does on the ball even with his hands, you know, Jokic having a bigger impact off the ball than he does on the ball, even when he has it in his hands. So not necessarily from the facilitation, but just the activity that, and the movement that he generates alone is, it, it's just, it's great as a big man. Uh, it's all time levels as a big man. There's a lot of switching, a lot of screening. We understand that. But again, his impact off the ball when he has the ball in his hands uh, is just crazy. The amount of movement he generates, knowing that players are going to get rewarded, open cuts, all of that sort of stuff. Really, really generating a lot of momentum there for Denver. And of course, not enough, uh, not enough out Miami, um, are not enough out of Miami's second and third tier players to keep a balance in this series. And these second and third terms have been really crucial. Just when you want players like that to really step up, they're unable to do it, and it really just lets the series go. Your Struces, your Vincents, your Martins, all of these guys, when you need them to have that big quarter, when you need a bit of a let-me-up, when you can get some rest into Bam, when you could get some rest into Jimmy, they're not doing it. And that's explaining a lot of these big minutes for them two key start, for their two key stars there, obviously, Jimmy Butler and Bam out of Bio. Jokic at the half, 16 points, five rebounds, two assists, one steal, two blocks, one turnover, 5-11 of the field, two from four from deep, and four or four from the line for Butler, still leading the way. Thir 14 points, 33 rebounds, sorry, 14 points, three rebounds, five assists, six and nine from the field, one of three from deep, one of four from the free throw line. Overall, from deep, Denver were 50%, Miami 33%. Stocks in favor of Denver, eight to one. And the field goal percentage still somewhat though in favour of the Heat, 52.6, but 46.2 really jumping up there for Denver as they started to really claw their way back into the game. Miami were 20 of 38 from the field at this point, while Denver was 18 of 39. Third term really started to open things up, and this is just where Aaron Gordon really took over this game again, really stamped himself on it. Three-quarter time, saw Denver up 86-73. Aaron Gordon continued to change the outlook of the game with a big third term. Just massive impact from him. A guy who's able to come out, take over a game. I'm eating a lot of words here. I don't, I didn't think that 
if Aaron Gordon was your healthiest third option that you could win a championship. But when you've got an outlier offensively in Jokic, and when you've got a guy who steps up in the postseason like Murray, generally you're going to have the advantage. You're going to get it done. That's exactly what's going on here. Uh, continue to change the outlook. Big third term. It's these big quarters and pinching minutes that have really changed the series for Denver. Gordon's term in the third term this year, uh, in this game, and he's done it. Uh, you know, first quarter, uh, first win. The third quarter was Jamal Murray. Second win. Uh, the third quarter was Nikola Jokic. Third win. The third quarter was Aaron Gordon, uh, and really changed the outlook and overall has impacted this series as well as any third option that we've seen in the finals for quite some time. Jokic getting on the glass and asserting himself in a manner in that manner defensively. He's not a good defender. He's not a great defender. Yes, he's got defensive numbers, but let's be honest, you're pretty comfortable if he's the one that's left guarding a really active big man. Problem is, they've got to be just as active defensively, and Jokic has a way of impacting beyond that. And that's, of course, his rebounding ability. He's one of the best rebounders in the league. Getting on the glass, asserting himself in that way defensively, still getting points on the board. And what else can you ask from him? Really having a really good game there. Jamal Murray continued to play that combo guard role well. He's got 10 assists out from the guard position uh, at the moment. He's proved to be a good, a very good scorer. He's lifting his game in the finals, lifting his game in the postseason. Really getting reward uh, for the effort he can, and he's really starting to step up and, and make that case as you know that all, all NBA level player, let alone an All Star player. So Jamal Murray again taking more and more strides in this postseason. He's playing that combo guard really, really well. And I think that's a big positive as well for Denver, who all of a sudden can look to solidify at the point there. You know, you want to run Michael Porter Jr. and you want to roll, run the Cold War Pope, but you could almost look to keep Porter Jr. in the lineup just for some athleticism. You can then move Caldwell Pope back to the six-man position. You can bring in a defensive-minded point guard. That changes the outlook of this team once again, uh, particularly if they're just a defensive point guard who can score a little bit, doesn't need to distribute. Jamal Murray's got that ability in spades. Of course, it's nice to have a point guard that can distribute. There's no doubt about it. But Jamal Murray's showing he's more than capable of that as well. Third term continues to be the crux for the Heat, trying to get production out of anyone meaningful and get any substantial evidence on this series in the third term at any point has been terrible for the Heat. They have struggled tremendously in the third term and, and ultimately it's these third quarters that are costing them games and may cost them a championship. They doubled their turnovers in the third alone, Miami, so that really didn't help either, particularly as the score started to blow out, particularly as momentum shifted and as it became more evident that the Heat weren't going to win this game. And unfortunately for Bam, as good as he is, he's too small to compete with Nikola Jokic. Bam's a power forward. Let's get him out of center. Let's get him into the power forward position. You need a Steven Adams as your center if Bam Adebayo is going to star as a power forward. Bam needs to be able to play the glass a little bit, but don't let him try and bang down low with these big guys. He's a good defender, and he's had a good series. I'll say that he's been Miami's best player. I've got no doubt in saying that he's Miami's best player. But he's too small to compete with Nikola Jokic. He's too small to compete with Joel Embiid. You need a Steven Adams like center around him, someone who's going to get you seven points, 11 rebounds, and have a bit of presence on the glass, a bit of size, a bit of physicality. Bam can continue to help, almost like Anthony Davis. The thing is, he's smaller than Anthony Davis. I would much rather Anthony Davis play center than Bam Adebayo, and I'd much rather Bam Adebayo play power forward. Three quarter time, though. Denver led 86 73. Aaron Gordon, 25 points, five rebounds, four assists, and steal, two turnovers, 10 of 13 from the field, perfect from the deep, two of three from the line. Butler was still leading the way. 18 points, three rebounds, seven assists and a block. Seven to 13 from the field, one to three from deep, three to six from the strike. So minimal uh, improvement from the first quarter, let alone from half time. At this point though, Denver leading the way, 50% versus 47.5 from the field. They were 31 to 62 compared to the Heat, 28 to 59. They were 50% from deep, 10 to 20 versus the Heat, who were 35%, seven to 20. And stock still in favor of Denver. 12 to 4 final scores 108 95 Denver leading the way in this one and we're capitalized by the big help from Bruce Brown there who was a nightmare rotation in the fourth quarter just proved pivotal even though they tied the scores there uh, 22 apiece I believe it was in the fourth term Bruce Brown just proved to be the rotation nightmare for the Heat the guy they couldn't keep up with Miami with no rotation in the fourth did not sub anyone else into the game and went with their best lineup across the game in Butler, Bam, Martin, Lowry, and Robinson. Did not 
sub anyone else into this game. They tried to win it with their best players. That to me tells me that was the final uh, that was the final bullet in the chamber. They tried to salvage game two, game uh, four, and they couldn't do it. I think that was the last shot Miami fired. Michael Porter Jr. sat the entire fourth term. He's had an underwhelming series, and I just wonder whether they're at a slight crossroads with Michael Porter Jr., but his upside has been good. His health has not. I think you have to persist for another 12 months before you look at that one there. Denver now with a 3-1 series lead. They're headed home for game five. Player of the game, Aaron Gordon, the difference maker in the second and third term, my game four MVP. As I mentioned, 25 points, five rebounds, four assists, one steal, two turnovers, 10 to 13 from the field, three or three from deep, two out of three from the free throw line. Here's a guy that I didn't think could be the third option on a championship team. And here he is getting a win for his team in what appears to be their inaugural championship series. Big difference there in the second and third term. The middle of the game, broke it open, held fast, knew that they needed a fight back, led the fight back, needed to solidify their position, and did that. Massive effort there from Aaron Gordon, having a really nice series. Of course, needed to be freed up once he got out of Orlando, just couldn't quite get the position and the role they wanted for him. Gets there to Denver right now. He has to be happy with the way he's playing and has to be happy with his contributions. Of course, my finals MVP is still Nikola Jokic, who had his worst game statistically, but it does say a lot. If the worst game he's had this series is 23 points, 12 rebounds, 4 assists, 3 steals, and 3 blocks. Still the finals MVP. Currently running with averages of 30 points, 13.3 rebounds, and 8 assists. 30, 13, and 8. But Aaron Gordon, my player of the game in this one, he has had a pretty good series himself. It's really hard to, again, just try and quantify and see what he has been doing in this spectrum here. But just a guy who's used his size and a guy who has consistently used it the right way. This isn't a big settling for jumpers. This isn't a big who drops the shoulder. This isn't a big lacking any craftsmanship or skill. This is a guy who has been able to size up the floor, who has been able to understand, right, this is the time to take a jump shot, right. This is the time to work to the post, right. This is the time to take you off the dribble. Um, This is a a time to get out on the break. He's really doing a lot of great stuff, and a lot of people really aren't looking at the contributions that he's making overall here. Of course, this season, he averaged uh, 16 points, 16.3 points, 6.6 rebounds, three assists. It's his best scoring output since 2017-18. That's the second best of his career. Uh, rebounding, uh, mediocre around the mark. His assist totals uh, around the mark there. You go to the postseason, though. Drops down a little bit. 13.7, 5.9, 2.7. It is his NBA Finals that has been really, really good, though, as we mentioned. It was a big reason they opened up that first quarter and dominated that first quarter against Miami. He's had little spurts here or there, but in the game they needed to secure to get back onto their home floor with a lead, with a commanding series lead, just looking to dominate it here. That's exactly what he's done. 16 in the final, 16.5 points, 7.5 rebounds, 3.5 assists, 66.7 from the field, 71.4 from deep. Uh, He's 5 or 7 from deep. He's really struggling at the line, but just making a difference. That's a big reason as well for my, you know, the difference with Miami right now. Caleb Martin hasn't stepped up. Jimmy Butler hasn't played like Jimmy Butler has been able to do. Max Struess hasn't done what he needs to do. Gabe Vincent hasn't done what he needs to do. Their best player has been Bam Adebayo. You are not going to win an NBA championship. If Bam Adebayo is your best player. Simple as that. The guys that Denver need to step up when they have stepped up are the guys that needed to do it and have done it perfectly. It hasn't happened for the Heat. So as much as we want to sit here and give full credit to Jokic, which we should, because a lot of these performances have come from Jokic's abilities and the way he's played, we do need to give credit to the guys who are producing. Aaron Gordon, to me, is a prime example of that. That is why he is my Game 4 MVP. Game 5, less than 24 hours away. Hope everyone tunes in to enjoy it. Very well could see some history in the making for the Denver Nuggets. Otherwise, Miami looking to force it back to Miami for Game 6. We will see what happens there. Anyway, guys, that's been me. I'm out.